Hi again, everybody. I am uh, cruising through another afternoon here in my home, so I need to let you know that, oh, I just heard Shepard. The kids are all awake from their nap. I'm trying to crank this out, and everybody wakes up. So we're going to keep going, but if you hear little voices in the background, those are my kids. What I want to talk about today are dad jokes. You know, everybody, well, maybe not everybody, do you have dad jokes in your life? You know, the, the uncle, the dad, the brother who has those three jokes that they think are so funny, and then they share them at family events. So when you get together with the family, you hear them the chatter, and then you hear your dad, your uncle, your brother start in with these few lines of the same joke you've heard over and over and over, and you know what's coming. That's what I'm talking about today. Only now, instead of my dad telling the jokes, it's my husband. And that's awesome. Not really. So, you know, my husband, we go out with friends or family, and he's got these three jokes that he thinks are so funny. And so we go out, and I hear the setup, and I try really hard to not roll my eyeballs or groan. Well, Curtis the Mentalist is here today, and he is trying to combat... Uh, the dad joke, if you will, by teaching all of us a card trick. So my hope is that my husband will watch and see this card trick, and maybe the next time we go out with friends, instead of sharing the same three jokes again and again and again, he can at least do this card trick. Are you watching, honey? <laughs> Here's Curtis. But so I thought that this month, instead of doing some mind hack or some uh, clever thing about improving our lives or whatever, uh, that I would uh, add to the fun by teaching you a really fun trick that you can go out there and do to your family and friends when you have these gatherings. Something that's very, very simple to do, but pretty mind blowing and pretty puzzling that I think uh, you can have a lot of fun with at these summer gatherings. So. Uh, Let's not waste any more time and get right down to it. Now the effect involves a normal pack of playing cards. I do recommend that you borrow a deck from a friend or family member if you can at all. I mean, it really doesn't matter for the effect, but it enhances the effect a little bit because borrowing a deck from a spectator rules out the possibility that you may be using a specially prepared pack of cards, which as you're about to see in this effect is very plausible. Now there are actually a lot of different ways to present this, and I'm just going to show you one of my favorite ways of doing it. That's very straightforward, easy to follow, and pretty effective. So you take the deck out of the box, give it to a spectator to hold, and to mix up. They're going to mix, 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 mix. While they're mixing up, you explain to them, did you know that just by feeling the card sometimes, that you can actually tell what the value of the card is just by feeling it? Uh, if you know what you're looking for, and if you practice feeling it. I can, I'm pretty good at it, but I don't get it every time. But go ahead and mix up the cards. When you're satisfied that those cards are mixed up, once you hand them to me face down, you hand them to you face down. You take them and close your eyes and you give it a try. Hold the deck up, you feel, and you go, ah, I think, I don't know, it's hard to do this cold, but I'm getting black. And a number card, like maybe a six, is this a clubs? Six of clubs? Five of clubs, not far off. Uh, it wasn't quite right on there, but I'm gonna take the cards and put them behind my back and cut them a couple of different times and uh, give it another try just to bring a different card here to the bottom of the deck. Um, I'm getting that this one's red and this one's a heart. This is a seven of hearts, correct? Seven of hearts? Yes, and see, and it's, a, it's an amazing thing. The more you do it, the better you actually get at it and you sometimes get on a roll. Let me try another one. Um, I'm gonna get this one. Oh yes, this one's a court card. That's a jack and jack of diamonds, correct? Jack of diamonds, see, it's amazing. You won't even believe yourself. Once you learn to do it, it's just intuitive after a while. Um, you just kind of do this, uh, three of spades, three of spades, and you just keep doing it. People are not going to believe that you're gonna be able to do this just by touch, but you can, you can just keep on doing it. You just feel and you get hearts, three of hearts, uh, and on and on and on and on. I'm not gonna do this forever, but uh, we'll do it one more time. In fact, let's see what I can do oh, with this one. Give it a feel. Oh, that is the queen of diamonds. Should be the queen of diamonds. Awesome queen of diamonds. Now you take the deck and you give it a try and see if you can do it too. Which they won't be able to. Because they don't know the secret and you do. Want to know the secret? Let me explain. So how does it work? Well, it's quite simple. The method is very, very simple. Um, in fact, it's so simple you probably won't believe me when I tell you. Now, after they've mixed the cards and they hand them back to you, you genuinely don't know what the card is. So the first attempt, you guess. Now, there are ways of knowing what that card is and trickery where you can know what the first one is. But I'm not going to go into that because it's a little more complicated. I want to teach you just a simple that you can do anytime, anywhere. Simple method that you can do anytime, anywhere. 
and this is how it works. Um, you don't know the card, so you pick it up and you guess, and you say you're just warming up. So you can, you know, feel it, do this and that. Say, uh, I think it's a black card, maybe a club. Is it a seven of clubs? Uh, oh man, I'm way off. And so you just blow that off as an excuse. And when you go to place the cards behind your back, here's what you do. You do a key move here. You simply, uh, you can you can cut the deck if you like. Actually, cut it so that it's in a di the different card is facing out. Then you turn over the top card of the deck. Turn over the top card out. Now you keep in mind you're doing this behind your back. Just cut the deck in half, complete the cut, and then turn over the top card. This way, when you bring the cards up like this, and you're guessing, and you're doing all of this stuff here, um, you're going to get it wrong again. Again, guess, because uh, you might just get the color right, you might get the heart right, and then take credit for it. Say, well, I'm getting the color, I'm slowly building up to it. As you're putting the cards away, you're just able to glance at the card and then you'll know what the next card is. Simple as that. So when you place them behind your back, you take that card that you know, place it on the face out or the bottom of the deck essentially, turn over the next card. So I know the next card I display is going to be the king of spades. I bring it up, I don't have to look, feel, pretend, you got to be a little bit of an actor. Get the card right, take a look at it. Wow, king of spades. See, I told you I could do this. I knew if I warmed up and as you're bringing it back down. Now you got to make sure that when you look at the card, Next card will be the five of clubs. But you're not doing it for very long. You have to just take a practice even. Sometimes in your peripheral vision with your out, like I'm looking straight into the camera lens, I can see that's a five of clubs without looking directly at it. You don't want to spend any time looking at it or like doing anything suspicious. So you just real quick, you glance at it and say, we well, keep trying. Uh, hopefully I can get it right again this time. Again, you're turning over another card, bring it up. You define the five of clubs. Wow, you got it, and then you know what the next one. So when you're ready to stop, simply uh, do not turn over the top card. Remember the last card, uh, you, you figure it out and you say, um, seven of hearts. And then you can hand the deck out to them and say, maybe you can try it. Maybe I, I suggest like mixing it a little bit before you hand it to them, say it can be done with any deck of cards. And it's just fun. And again, you can't have anyone behind you is something to keep in mind. Uh, you can't because they can see what you're doing. You don't want them to your extreme sides either. And you want to be careful when you're bringing the cards back behind your back that you don't flash and turn them this way. Keep them parallel to your body so that when you do that, they don't see that you've got a turned over card on the top. Um, and don't spend too much time fidgeting behind your back because then they're going to really wonder what you're up to. Um, and two, they can see that if you turn around and show them there's no cards like shoved in your back pocket that you're just adding to the deck, nothing like that. You're, you're very clean. So everything's all done and contained within the deck right there. But it's just a fun little trick uh, and I guarantee you, you will fool some people with it. You pull it off right, practice it a little bit and uh, you can do it outside at the barbecue. You could do it inside um, your house at a family gathering or a party, whatever, um, and it's a, it's a guaranteed fooler and it will, uh, you can have some fun with it. Uh, get creative with it, come up with your own ways of presenting it. Uh, like I said, there's different ways. I like to do the feel deal because it's not so much a mind reading trick. Or you could say everyone in the room focus on the card and I'll try to pick up on your thoughts and then get the card that way. Um, there's different ways to present it. Um, you don't even need a whole deck, you can just use a small pack of cards and do, do it that way. Uh, perhaps they mix up the order and then you're able to tell what they are. Uh, there's just different ways in which you can present it. So uh, have some fun with it. Go out, uh, fool all your friends, have some fun, and uh, convince them that you're the amazing uh, mind reader. So that's a pretty cool card trick, right? Try that at your next family gathering, all you dad joke tellers, and I guarantee you the response will be way more enthusiastic than the same three or four jokes that you've been telling over and over and over. Have a great day, everybody. Okay, I'm done.